Welcome to the Betting Pros PGA Podcast. I'm Pat Fitzmorris, joined as always by Mr. Bo McBrayer. Scotty Scheffler is another Green Jackets. The number one player in the world crushed the field at Augusta National. We will do a quick recap of the Masters, and then we will give you a thorough betting preview of the RBC Heritage. It's an elevated event, so we're going to get a very good field for the RBC this year. We'll also give you a couple of best bets for the other event on the PGA Tour calendar this week, the Corrales Punta Canta Championship in the Dominican Republic. And of course, we'll give you our one and done picks at the end of the show. The Betting Pros PGA podcast is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the place to go for best ball fantasy football contests, but you might not have known that Underdog has golf contests too. Sign up for Underdog if you haven't already with the promo code BPGOLF to get your first deposit matched up to $100. Plus, there's a special pick available for you in the lobby. More on Underdog and its golf contest a little later. Bo, I'm not sure we have an adequate supply of superlatives for Scotty Scheffler. The Masters is supposed to be decided Sunday on the back nine, and for a while it looked like it would be that way. I think we had a four-way tie for the lead uh, between Scheffler, Colin Morikawa, Ludwig Oberg, and Max Homa. As the final groups approach the turn, then Scotty birdied holes 8, 9, 10. Uh, Morikawa double bogeyed the 9th and the 11th. Oberg double bur- bogeyed the 11th. And Homa double bogeyed the 12th. And if there was any hope at all for any of those guys to play catch up, uh, Scotty just squeezed the life out of those guys with birdies on 13, 14, and 16. Um, he finished. 11 under par. Oberg took second place, four shots back at minus seven. No one else finished better than minus four in a week where we saw some very tough scoring conditions at Augusta. The course was playing firm and fast throughout, and on Thursday and Friday, we got wind added to the equation. Sand blowing out of bunkers into players' faces. Uh, It was wild. So for Scotty to finish 11 under par was pretty remarkable. But let's save some bouquets for Oberg. I mean, this was his very first major uh, for the 24-year-old Swede, and he turned in a very impressive performance on a course where first-timers usually struggle, and I love this guy's demeanor, Bo. Um, It seemed like he was having fun out there. Young star is a bright future. Uh, Not a great week for the live guys. Bryson DeChambeau led after round one, but then finished over par in each of his next three rounds. Really struggled with the putter on the weekend. Cam Smith and Tyrrell Hatton were both top 10, but never seriously contended. Brooks Kepka couldn't get it going. Dustin Johnson was a complete train wreck and missed the cuts. Uh, what else? Tiger Woods played well Thursday and Friday, but then went belly up on the weekend, fell apart, had an 82 and a 77. He appeared to be less than fully healthy, which kind of stinks. Um, Interesting scene with Zach Johnson on Friday. The most recent Ryder Cup captain triple bogey the 12th hole. There seemed to be some sarcastic applause from someone in the gallery. And as Johnson tapped in, he appeared to direct an F-bomb toward the patrons, uh, but then denied having done so afterward. Not a great look for a guy who has cultivated a very wholesome image over the years. But what were some of your takeaways from the 2024 Masters? I mean, it was it was vintage Augusta National. Even when the weather was very difficult, the conditions were for scoring were insanely difficult. It was it, there was wind affecting putts, which even when the wind isn't affecting putts at Augusta National, it's it's extremely difficult. Scotty Scheffler is a robot. I'm pretty sure he's a robot. He's 27 years old. That's his second green jacket in three years, and it looked like he was in cruise control even when everything everybody around him was just dropping off and that's what happens is you get the guy who doesn't make mistakes scotty scheffler when he makes mistakes he mitigates how much damage it causes his scorecard he does that better than anybody in the world that's why he's number one in the world his putting was immaculate despite having a struggle earlier in the season this guy was making nails knee buckling putts for par even if he was saving bogey he made all of those and I think Ludwig Oberg would have been closer in contention if he didn't overhook that one approach shot on 11 where he made the double. He was within two shots of the lead at that moment. And when he made that double, he was two, he, he went to four back and that was, that was curtains. 
But Ludwig Oberg is what, 23, 24 years old? 24. He's uh he's the future of this game. I've been talking about him on my other show for a couple of years already because he's that special. He's got the it factor. He's got the swag. And if you noticed when he hit that overhook into the pond on 11, he was smiling. Like what a stupid <laughs> shot. All I had to do is hit it 40 feet right of the pin and let the wind carry it towards the pin and I'm safe. And I got two putt par move on. And he overhooked it. He knew it as soon as he hit it. And he was smiling at himself. That tells you that this guy's got so much swag that even the shot that ruins his chances to win a green jacket in his major debut didn't really phase him. He's that good. He's a future robot. He's he's Scotty Scheffler in a couple years. I, that's a, that's I truly believe that. Um, he's got all the game in the world and the right mindset to be a champion. Uh, for him to do that in his first major period in conditions that difficult, I mean, give all the flowers to Ludwig Oberg because that was as impressive as it gets. Uh, as far as the live guys, they just didn't. They never really got it going. There was a couple guys that finished high. Cam Smith uh, didn't really c- couldn't make any birdies. That was his problem. He made an eagle hole out on the final round and then finished up with all pars and one bogey. So he had no birdies and shot under par. <laughs> so I mean, that's uh, it's it's pretty amazing that that course just kind of sifted through everybody and everybody who challenged Scotty at one point all faltered. Scotty held true. There's no more deserving champion than that guy. Unbelievable. Uh, my guy, Brooks Kepka, out of 60 players who made the cut, he was 60th in strokes gained putting on the field. Not good. His ball striking no, was fine. Uh, he just couldn't buy a bucket. <laughs> yeah, he wound up tying uh, 58-year-old Jose Maria Olafable. Yeah. So uh, not not an ideal week for for Kepka. Um, boy, it's funny that we used to wonder about Scotty's putting. I mean, like <laughs> Scotty getting that mallet putter was like Happy Gilmore getting the hockey stick putter. It was. Um, it's just like n- now. I mean, he's like seems like he's one of the better putters on tour. He all is. of a sudden, and and when you hit the ball like that, his approach shot to number fourteen mm-hmm. on Sunday. Uh, with that tough pin position in the back yep. and, uh, you know, just it, hitting it just left of the pin, knowing it would spin right back to the hole. I mean, it just high art the way Scotty is doing and it now. Ultimate irony is on Sunday, his approach game wasn't as sharp as it, use, it usually is, but he was so dialed in around the greens, which is another huge factor at Augusta Nationals, being able to chip it close enough to save your par on these staying below the hole, staying in a, in a makeable range for those, those knee knee buckling pars. Scotty did all of that when he missed greens or if he missed his mark, he did that plenty on Sunday where he just chipped it to three feet, tapped in for par moved on. And that's in conditions like that. I can't stress enough. That was the most impressive part is he didn't ever shoot himself in the foot. Even when he hit a bad shot, you just knew he was going to recover. Truly amazing performance, and now he is back in the field this week at the RBC Heritage. Yes. um, Our friends at Underdog Fantasy are letting you make picks on your favorite golfers all season long. Just pick higher or lower on selected stats for two to five golfers, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single day. You can also make rivals picks, choosing, for instance, which of two golfers will shoot a better score in a round. Golf picks can be combined with player stats from other sports, too. Go sign up at Underdog Fantasy with the promo code BPGOLF to get your first deposit match up to $100, plus that special pick available for you in the lobby. Well, the Masters is traditionally followed by the RBC Heritage. Last week, everyone was playing for the green jacket. This week, they're playing for the tartan jacket that goes to the winner of this event. The host course is Harbor Town on Hilton Head Island. It's a short trip from Augusta. And with the PGA Tour designating the RBC Heritage an elevated event, it's going to be a small but star-studded field. Only 65 players, I believe. Harbor Town is a par 71 covering 7,213 yards. It's a Pete Dye design, so Target Golf is the name of the game this week. Not a very long course, but 
It demands precise ball striking. The fairways are on the narrow side, and there are some spots on the course where there's a canopy of trees overhanging the fairway. So precise ball placement off the tee is important. The rough is definitely shaggier than it was at Augusta National, and another reason why accuracy off the tee is so imperative. The Bermuda greens at Harbortown are smaller than average. There's a lot of sand on the course, and because Harbortown is on Hilton Head Island, the players are going to have to reckon with the sea breeze. Weather should be pretty nice on Hilton Head this week. Temperatures in the low 80s for most of the tournament, winds of 10 to 15 miles an hour, and... So breezy, not gusty, like we saw in the first two days at the Masters. And the only chance of rain is Sunday morning, I believe, or no, Sunday afternoon. So maybe they'll move up the Sunday tea times a bit if the forecast holds. Uh, Recent winners at RBC Heritage. Matthew Fitzpatrick beat Jordan Spieth in a playoff last year. They were both at 17 under par after 72 holes. One shot ahead of Patrick Cantlay, two shots ahead of Xander Shoffley. It was the second straight RBC Heritage playoff for Spieth. He beat Cantlay in a playoff here in 2022. They both finished at minus 13. Stuart Sink won at Harbortown in 2021, finishing 19 under par to beat Emiliano Grillo and Harold Varner III by four shots. Webb Simpson won in 2020. C.T. Pan won in 2019. But when you look even further down the list of champions, you see a lot of players who weren't big hitters, but were extremely accurate off the tee. Jim Furyk, Matt Kuchar, Brendan Grace, Brian Gay, Justin Leonard, Nick Price. Uh, Luke Donald never won here, but he perennially contended. The big hitters have advantages on a lot of the tour courses, but bunters get their fair shake at Harbortown. Your thoughts on Harbortown and the kind of players who might do well here, Mr. McBriar? Well, if Scotty Scheffler is keen on staying in this field, which I'm very doubtful of, this course again sets up well for him because from tee to green, who's better? And from from tee to around the green, who's better? This guy is in, unflappable. The putting doesn't really differentiate from the best here. So this is another Scotty Scheffler special, which it's hard to find a golf course that wouldn't be really uh, with the way he's playing. It's going to be an accurate player off the tee, not necessarily long because it's a Pete Dye target golf type of planners course, but long hitters do well here if they're able to find the fairways and if they can put themselves in position to be close to the hole on these tiny, tiny greens. Uh, that's that's another Pete Dye special is these greens are tiny complexes and so you're going to miss some greens and you have to be able to scramble and get the ball up and down bogey avoidance is huge so i don't know if it favors a particular type of golfer more than another other than recent form telling us who's striking the ball the best who's scoring the best uh and of course it it always helps to have a guy who can find the fairway the short grass and the correct angle to set themselves up for such opportunities yeah, it's not a favor or uh, not a surprise that Scotty Scheffler is the favorite uh, at plus four hundred. Other players with short odds: Xander Shoffley at plus one thousand, Rory McIlroy at plus eleven hundred, Ludwig Oberg at plus twelve hundred, Patrick Cantlay at plus sixteen hundred, Tommy Fleetwood and Colin Morikawa at plus eighteen hundred, Max Homa and Matthew Fitzpatrick at plus twenty two hundred. Will Zalatoris and Jordan Spieth at plus 2,500, and Wyndham Clark and Cameron Young plus 2,800. Bo, last week I said I couldn't bring myself to bet Scotty Scheffler at either plus 400 or plus 450 at the Masters against such a great field. Uh, Terrible take by me. Mea culpa there. (laughs) It's terrible. Uh, (laughs) I have a different reason why I'm reluctant to bet Scotty this week, and, and I think you just kind of hinted at it. Scheffler's wife is pregnant with their first child. He said during the weekend at Augusta when he was leading that he would leave and withdraw from the tournament if his wife went into labor. He already has his green jacket or had his first green jacket and, uh, you know, did not want to miss the birth of his first child. So that is the variable scaring me away from Scotty this week, Bo. Uh, He could be winning or in contention. All of a sudden his wife goes into labor and he withdraws. I mean, that's just... Uh, I don't know. That is discouraging me. What about you? 
I would be surprised if he didn't withdraw before action started, just to take the week off. This this could be his one signature event that he skips this year. Um, that that's the one thing about this tournament is it's the sixty nine golfers. It's a limited field, elevated money, all that. So this is the strongest field this tournament's ever seen. Scotty Scheffler already in his post tournament interview said that he was going to take some time off, and so I I think that being this is early in the week when this is going to be published. Um, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if he withdrew before this even hit the air. Um, so yeah, if he's still in the field, when you, when you hear this message, uh, brace yourself because it, at any moment, the, the odds on favorite and the, probably the easiest four to one bet you're ever going to make is not likely to finish this tournament. Uh, so yeah, take that for what it's worth. You can throw some money on him. You're gonna throw out, have to throw a lot of money on a favorite this 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 short to to get your investment return that that's gonna work for you. Uh, so I mean, it's obviously if he does somehow stay through to four rounds, I think his odds should be even shorter. I, I was expecting a plus two fifty if it, if there wasn't this dynamic of uh, childbirth. That's uh, that's that's a huge huge factor in this number as it is. I don't know that I like anybody else's odds in this top tier without Scotty. So I'm I'm kind of tilted here because I want to bet Scotty, but I also don't know. I don't believe Scotty's going to finish this tournament or even start it. And I go down quite a ways before I find the next guy that I really like a number on. Yeah, uh, I know what you mean. I'm I'm not loving the odds for some of the um, I don't know some of the guys who would be among the favorites if Scotty withdraws. And by the way, I think Scotty did fly back to Dallas after the tournament. I saw pictures of him in a Dallas bar celebrating. Yep, that's um, right. So yeah, it, considering that. I believe Harbor Town is only about 150 miles away from Augusta National. Um, seems pretty unlikely he would go back. Hopefully he withdraws beforehand because I would imagine if anyone put money on him he, and he withdraws before he tees it up, you would get refunded that money. But, uh, you know, if he started and withdraws, obviously different story. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, of these guys, um, Patrick Cantlay has finished outside the top 20 in his last three events. Hasn't really had a good tournament since he finished fourth at the Genesis back in mid-February, but he's finished either second or third in four of his six career appearances at Harbor Town. so obviously the course suits him. Uh, Matt Fitzpatrick has been in pretty good form, fifth at the Players' Championship, tenth at the Valero Texas Open, a respectable 22nd at the Masters. He won the RBC Heritage last year, finished fourth in 2021, finished top 15 in 2020 and 2018. Um, Then there's Jordan Spieth, who's made it to two straight playoffs here, of course. Uh, Oberg making his debut, uh, but he's played seven events this year. He's finished top 25 in all of them with four top 10s and two second place finishes, including last week at Augusta. And how about Tommy Fleetwood, third at the Masters, seventh the week before at the Valero Texas Open, and he's finished top 15 at Harbortown each of the last two years. Um, So those are guys worth considering, Bo, but none of them really uh, capture fancy enough for you to actually bet them. I I thought I was going to have better odds on Xander Shoffley, who's, uh, apart from Scotty, easily the best in my modeling uh, but at 10 to 1, I'm hesitant to bet on Xander, especially when he's had trouble finding fairways, uh, which is pretty important here. He's uh, 60th out of 69 in fairways gained here. So uh, other than that, he's pretty sterling as far across the board in stats. He looked really good at Augusta National, just didn't have enough to to chase Scotty. But he, was, he had a very solid finish last week. His form has been good, just not winning form. I just think that if Scotty does withdraw Xander's the class of this field, especially in recent recent what they're doing. Uh, I like Ludwig, but I don't love him. I definitely don't like him that much at 12 to 1. That's way too short for him, um, especially on a course that's going to put a lot of demand on his off the tee game. I, I, I just the top of this board is pretty rough for me, and it's it's just I, I love Colin Morikawa. But 18-1, to 1, again, is a little short for what we've seen from him. This course does set up pretty spectacular for him, though, 
from off the tee and on approach, this guy's absolutely nails. It does. I I sort of like Cantley Bow just because we know what he's capable of and he has the the really strong track record here. Um poor form lately and I think that's where why we're getting what I consider to be value on him at mm. 16 to 1 um which would no doubt be shorter most of the time. Maybe he's just not playing enough. Only three tournaments since that strong finish at the Genesis. So um, I'm considering him. Mm-hmm. More odds in just a moment. But first, if you want a chance to win a free one-year premium Betting Pro subscription, you need to subscribe to the Betting Pro's YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video, and that's it. We'll be announcing a winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. All right, let's look at the mid-range options. Siwoo Kim, Justin Thomas, and Sahith Thigala are plus 3,500. Tony Finau, Sam Burns, Russell Henley, and Brian Harmon, plus 4,000. Tom Kim, Corey Connors, Shane Lowry, plus 4,500. Jason Day is plus 5,000. Uh, and hopefully he won't be wearing that garish sweater vest uh, <laughs> at Harbor Town this week that the officials at Augusta National actually asked him to remove. Cameron Davis and Akshay Batia are plus 5,500, and we have a big group at plus 6,000 with Sepp Straka, JT Poston, Harris English, Denny McCarthy, Chris Kirk, and Ben On. Anyone from this group? This group's Appeal loaded football. with guys I love. Uh, number right off the bat, uh, we kind of... Did you say Justin Thomas? Because he's, he's in this... Yeah, he's at 50 to 1. Uh, Justin Thomas, number three in my model. And then Russell Henley, number four, and Sahithi Gala, number seven. I think I like Ben On more than anybody. Ben On's been on a heater. Really? Ben On a heater. <laughs> number six in my model. <laughs> number two in birdies are better gained. He's number six on the on the 175 to 200 yard approach proximity. And a very important stat here at Harbor Town is strokes gain on par fours, and he is number five in this field. So I like Henley. I think Ben On's going to get the most attention for me on my betting slip. But uh, this this group of guys is the best value for for my money on the betting card. So I'll probably sprinkle a little bit on those three guys: Thomas, Henley, and On. And I'm thinking about Thigala and DFS, but I don't know if I want to bet I'm on a course that demands so much off the tee. Yeah, um, Henley, the Bermuda specialist, of course. Mm-hmm. That's uh, appealing. Um, ben On, uh, I suppose, theoretically, with the uh, for a guy who's putting, sometimes we, uh, we question, mm-hmm. better to have him be on smaller greens. Um, yeah, so Shane Lowry is interesting. He's finished top 10 here in three of the last five years, including a pair of third place finishes. And he also ranks number one on tour right now in driving accuracy. Plus, if we do get a little bit of a sea breeze, well, you know, Mm -hmm. he's a guy who's used to playing in windy conditions. Uh, Brian Harmon has three career top 10s at Harbortown. His game seems to fit the course. Uh, And while he's been sort of hit or miss this season, he's finished top 25 in three of his last five events. Uh, JT Postenbo, Il Postino, three top 10s here in the last five years, uh, although also a pair of missed cuts. Top 10 in driving accuracy, so... Maybe his game fits the course. And Cameron Davis kind of quietly finished 12th in the Masters, which I I believe gets him an automatic invitation back next year. And in three previous appearances at the RBC Heritage, he's finished 25th, 3rd, and 7th. So those are some guys I'm I'm mildly intrigued by, at least. Um, We don't have as many long shot options to choose from this week. Uh, simply because of the smaller field. But that's not to say there aren't long shots we like, Bo. Oh, what about you? Yes. Anyone at, at longer than sixty to one uh, quite catches a few, your eye? Quite a few, actually. I'll be I'll be throwing because uh, that's a limited field. You mentioned the the dearth of of actual bodies here in such a small condensed field, but we're getting some really soft odds on great golfers that are playing great golf this year. And their odds just don't reflect it because of how strong this field is. Let me start right off the bat with, uh, our guy, Mathieu Pavon, the Frenchman. Look how good he looked. He looked really solid at the masters. It's another accuracy laden course. And Pavon has really played well all season dating back to his win in San Diego. Uh, 
I just think that if you're if you're going to put demands off the tee accuracy and an approach, and he's got a really solid short game, seventy five to one's way too long for a guy that's having such a great season. And then you can go all the way down, Kurt Kitayama, ninety to one for a guy who's in the top fifty in the world rankings. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, he's he's got enough power to where he'll be hitting iron off some of these tees and still have short irons in. Uh, his around the green game is spectacular, and he's as good of a grinder as it gets. So where this course isn't the easiest, it's also not. It's more average difficulty. If that breeze picks up, Kurt Kitayama is going to be the right up in the in the forefront. Uh, Nick Taylor, very accurate Canadian, 110 to one. Love him. Justin Rose, 130 to one. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, I actually will have quite a bit on Chandler Phillips, 300 to one for a guy who is very, very accurate off the tee, a very creative short game. Uh, he's playing great golf this year too. So Chandler Phillips, 300 to one doesn't make any sense to me at all. And I'll have some on Grayson Murray, 350 to one, Eric Barnes, 350 to one. The guys at the bottom here do not belong at the bottom. This is a strong field. I get it. But there's guys above these at shorter odds that I want no part of at any number. So it's it's just free value laying there for the taking. Yeah, uh, Chandler Phillips, interesting. You've been money with your truly long, long shots this year. So uh, I'm <laughs> going to have to give him a look. One, one guy I kind of like is Eric Van Royen at uh, 110 to 1. He missed the cut here last year, but in his other two RBC Heritage appearances, he finished 21st and 10th, and uh, he's got four top 25s and two top 10s this year. So it seems like 110 to 1 is a pretty good price. Uh, All right, Bo, who's on your betting card as of right now? So I am going to take the bait on Xander Shoffley at the top. I'm going to sprinkle some on Henley and on, and I'm going to go down to... Oof, I still haven't I haven't solidified these picks, but uh gonna throw Nick Taylor and uh Chandler Phillips. So so far those those five guys and then I'll probably have some some placement bets on a few others just to just to get some action on guys that I, I feel will do really well here. I'm betting Patrick Cantlay at plus 1,600. Um, as I said before, he's fared well at Harbortown, and I think we get a little bit of value on him just because of the poor recent showings. Uh, I'm betting Siwoo Kim at plus 3,500. Like, he's been in, in pretty decent form this year and uh, straight off the tee. I'm, I'm going back to the well on Shane lowry Bow, uh, plus 4,500 to win and plus, uh, well, 10 to 1 to finish top five. And uh, let's see, Cam Davis outright at plus 5,500. And uh, a, a little something on Eric Van Royen at 110 to 1. Mm-hmm. And top 20 at 3 to 1. So, all right, but let's quickly touch on the Corrales Punta Cana Championship in the Dominican Republic. It's played on the Corrales Golf Course at the Punta Cana Resort and Club. It's a par 72 that checks in at... 7,670 yards. It's a long course, unlike Harbortown. But if you look at past winners, there aren't that many bombers on the list. This course has those sticky past palum greens. It's going to be warm and breezy with a chance for rain on Sunday morning. Uh, Matt Wallace won here last year with a score of minus 19. One shot better than Nikolai Hogard. Wallace not in the field this week. Chad Ramey won here in 2022. Hudson Swafford won in 2021. Uh, Alex Noren and Nikolai Hoigard are the favorites this week. Noren has finished top 20 in his last four events. He's plus 1,200. Hoigard had a couple of ugly holes at the Masters, but still finished 16th. He had some nice finishes back in January. He finished second here last year. I'm betting Hoigard because he's the best player in the field, in my opinion. And I think there's value on him at plus 1,400. Let's see. I'm betting Nate Lashley at 30 to 1 and Ben Martin at 35 to 1. Lashley won here in 2017 and has some other decent finishes here, I guess. And his recent form's been okay. Ben Martin is three straight top 10 finishes here, including a second in 2022. What about you, Bo? Are you uh, dabbling at all at the Corrales Punta Cana? Oh, one more. Uh, I'm throwing $2 on Austin Cook 
at 150 to one. Okay. He was 13th here last year, and his recent form not bad. So I got to ask you: Do you think that that 150 to one bet is deeper than the guy I'm going to throw out there? No, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Uh, so I'm starting my betting card at Kevin Yu, 28 to one. Uh, not just a bomber; he's a great ball striker in general. I'm also going to go with a bomber at 45 to one, Joseph Bramlett, and another bomber at 70 to one, Peter Quest, who's a guy I've, I've mentioned on the show before. Uh, excellent, excellent T to green player. Uh, that's that's really what I'm looking for is ball strikers in general, not necessarily bombers, but all three of these guys can really lash it out there. They just are great iron players to boot. And of course, at 180 to one, how about the red hot, blazing, scorching Pearson Cootie? It's funny. Pearson Cootie was a train wreck early in the season. And he's hot. He now. was bad. He's hot. No, I know he has gotten hot. Yep. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. It's a like he was really, he was terrible earlier in the season. Like send this guy back to the corn fairy tour. Bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but lately, yeah, he is he has caught fire. That's interesting. Um, before we get to our one and done picks for the week, if you're playing in a one and done pool yourself, or if you are playing in any sort of tiers based majors pool this year our friends at pool genius have a new product that gives you an edge using objective data like betting odds course performance and national pick trends the tool highlights the top value picks that give you an edge and it can all be customized specifically for your pool if you're doing a one and done pool or majors pool Let Pool Genius be your secret weapon. And by the way, Pool Genius is not just for golf pools. You can use it for March Madness pools, NFL Survivor pools, and more. For 10% off on the Majors and Masters, uh, whoops, Majors tool, and for up to 55% off on yearly packages that include all golf, football, and March Madness tools, visit PoolGenius.com slash FantasyPros. Again, that's PoolGenius.com slash fantasy pros now let's get to our one and done picks but we're only going to do them for the rbc heritage uh but first a quick recap of last week not a banner week for either of us you had brooks kapka brooksy finished tied for 45th um yeah so he earned you fifty seven thousand two hundred dollars i had joaquin neiman who finished tied for 22nd good for one hundred and seventy five thousand five hundred. i make up a hundred thousand dollars on you Bo, but remain about three million behind <laughs> i am up first this week i'm gonna take patrick cantlay uh i'm kind of all in on him this week what about you yeah, I'm not going to dabble in the Cantlay. Uh, and as much as I'd love to play Scotty Scheffler here, it's not going to be a smart, very smart bet because considering I don't know if he'll, if he'll even play. And I also would love to play Ludwig Oberg here, but I'm going to skip him and play him at a different tournament, hopefully without Scotty anywhere near it. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go down a little bit on my board here, still above Patrick Cantlay on my board, ironically, uh, with Tommy Fleetwood. I, I, th- I don't know if he'll win because he never wins anything, but he comes in really solid across the board and all the accuracy metrics and short game uh, is immaculate here. So I, I think Tommy Fleetwood will earn me a respectable living in this elevated tournament uh, and hopefully uh, increase my sizable lead on you. Yes, uh, Fleetwood does not lay many eggs. Mm-mm. So yeah, but a uh, big purse this week. Yeah. So uh, you know there there could be a haymaker thrown by one of us, and it's based a, on the way it, this is a big so swing far. waiting to happen. Yeah, I'm I'm probably catching the business end of that haymaker based on the way things have gone so far you never in know. our one you and done never competition. Know. <laughs> And that's going to do it for this week's show. I want to thank our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Sign up at Underdog with the promo code BPGOLF to get your first deposit matched up to $100, plus that special pick available for you in the lobby. And please come join Bo and I again next week when we will be previewing the Wild and Wacky Zurich Classic of New Orleans. That's the two-man team event. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting breakdown for sure. We'll try to sort it all out and uh, settle on some plus EV bets. So join us for that. Until then, so long, everyone.